The objective of Team 2 is to promote communication, collaboration, public speaking, social and leadership skills. Why Team 2? Through Team 2, we're connecting generation. Team 2 is for collaboration. There are a lot of experience within the group itself for higher studies or jobs. You can get guidance. People within the community can help each other. Team 2 is for co communication. We have a planned approach for communication and skill development with projects. Team 2 is for leadership. We're interacting with leaders as guest speakers to our session and provide a chance for discussing with them. So set, set aside an hour every weekend for self-development. We have two streams at present, technology stream and communication stream. So please join and grow with us. Today we have a guest speaker, Ms. Lena Rose Thomas. Let me call Dia to introduce the guest speaker. Thank you. Hello everyone, I'm Dia. I'll be introducing you to our guest speaker. Our guest speaker today is Ms. Le uh, Lena Rose Thomas. Ms. Lena is working as a DGM IT. She did a BSc in 1988 from Mahatma Gandhi University, BTEC in Electronics and Telecommunication Engineering in 1995, MSc in 1990 in Physics from Kochi University of Science and Technology. In 1990, she started working as a junior telecom officer, subdivisional engineer, and divisional engineer in BSNL. Recently, she is promoted as a DGM IT. She has over 30 years of experience in telecom domain. Ma'am, we are honored to have you here with us. Over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Dia. And thank you, everyone. A good evening. Very good evening to all in this session. And thanks to Ashraf for giving me an opportunity to interact with you people. So let's begin the story. It's not a big story. Actually, I had my school days. I, uh, my school days was in Pale, a small town in Cotton District. So uh, you people are from Chennai or uh, is there anyone from uh, Kerala? Yeah, yes. majority from Kerala and then few from uh, Chennai and Coimbatore. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Majority from Ker Kerala. That's good. So that's what maybe you may be in the place. So uh, that was a, it, it was a small town and I had my school days in St. Mary's school. St. Mary's girls high school. I taught uh, it's uh, only for girls. And after that, and my pre-degree also, uh, up to plus two, no, no, up to, up to degree, I was, I, my studies was in Pale only. I laid, uh, for degree, I joined Alphonse College uh, for physics. And during my school days, physics my, was my favorite subject. School days, that's why that I, at that time, during my period, at the, during pre-degree, our time, it is pre-degree. You people are now uh, uh, doing plus two in school only. For, for us, plus one and plus two, that was in college. So at that time, I didn't want to be an engineer. I wanted to pursue my studies in physics. That was my dream. But I don't know how I joined as an engineer in telecom department. That may be my fate. That, that it, it is already, it, it is all destined. You, all, your future is destined, you know, that you can change. Definitely you can change with your uh, effort, with your uh, uh, work. And definitely it, nowadays you, you can change your passion also. During our time, during your mentor Ashraf Ji or uh, my classmate Kala is also there. So during that time, we don't have much options, opportunities out there. So, uh, so but you have uh, definitely, you have uh, wonderful, immense opportunities. Uh, earlier, it was not like that. But uh, after my uh, degree, uh, during my school days, I, I, I'm telling you, I actually 
it was like uh, i was not at all very serious about studies my school days it was not like it was like that only really. but later on during my degree i was a little more concentrated there yeah, yeah this passion for physics maybe because of that i and i got a rank uh, for de- uh, degree i don't know how of how it came but anyway uh, i got a first rank from M- mg university and that's how i land- landed in kisar uh for my msc so there i met a number of people like uh, your mentor ashraf and a lot many people since i was from a small town and uh, coming to kisat when i joined kisat definitely it was very difficult for me initially because at uh, during our time uh, like the school the notes everything were dictated during even my, during my college days but when i came to kisat it was not like that we had to write the professors will be doing the lecture we have to uh, write the lecture notes so it was difficult for me in the beginning to be frank but somehow that was an opportunity to interact with the different type of people uh, and in fact that was for the first time i'm going out, out of uh, that little town maybe for a trip and all i might have gone but going outside uh, staying outside or mm, moving away from my home uh, it was during my college days uh, during my ms days that was an excellent a wonderful time we had at kisat but that was a turning point in my career in the, it 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 shaped me or just for fun i have applied for junior telecom officer there was an opening in dot at that time it was department of telecom so when my uh, hostel mates were applying for that i also applied just for fun i i didn't know, i was not at all serious about joining uh, for a job because i wanted to pursue my studies in physics or uh then go for a phd it was a totally different uh ambition at that time but when i applied and i got the, my parents were very particular that i should join that uh, job i should take up the job in fact it was very difficult for me but i came to trivandrum for the training and after 8 months of training so initial days was very difficult for me but after joining the training center then it everything totally changed i got interested in what uh, the the job i re- got and i joined as a junior telecom officer after 8 months of training and in fact i was a topper in that training session also so that gave me much uh, some seniority position among the my fellow uh, my training mates so that's how i la- landed up in an engineering job so this I, I, at the time of joining i was not aware that what type of job it is and the scenario in dot that that 30 years back it was totally different we had very few phones landline uh, land, landline numbers we don't have mobile but that was an opportunity for me to learn new technology i joined in when i joined it was the first time an electronic telephone exchange installation was going on i joined as a 
in installation of telephone exchanges. So during that time, I think one only one electronic exchange was there. In that was at uh, Changanasheri in in Kerala. All other exchanges were electromechanical. You can think of moving parts. Uh, you you um, in initially I remember my uh, during my school days we had a phone at uh, at my home. So the uh, if sometimes it, it 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 goes faulty. So when you pick up the phone, you may be uh, we may be getting a a number of people will be linked. Phone is faulty, but I can hear the speeches of a number of people. So nobody knows who is on the other line. So you can call anything. You can just tell uh, something. Uh, you, you can poke fun of uh, uh, the people on the other side. So that was the case. It, uh, after joining only, I came to know that it is simply uh, it the the selectors got stuck that you have to manually push it up. Then only that linking will go. So that, that was a technology at the time. So I was trained in that electromechanical technology, but I happened to join in the installation of an electronic telephone exchange. And that was the first uh, full-fledged telephone exchange in Kerala, in Kerala Circle. So that was in way back in 90. And during that time, we're not having internet. Now you are all very blessed. No, you have access to your knowledge is at your fingertips, isn't it? So I tell, I'm telling you, you should use every opportunity to build up your knowledge because during our times we have to go to library, you have to search for the books. But now you open the internet, you will be getting. Whatever data, whatever knowledge you want to, you want to learn anything you can learn on the net. So internet was not there during my joining at, in ninety. So I think uh, we have, uh, yeah, in my office, I had a computer, a four eight six, only one computer. But the electronic exchange. Uh, we are doing everything man man machine dialogues we can enter the command and the equipments uh, every, it's very it's very sophisticated not much failures like what i told you in the beginning that linking and all everything is uh, automated internet also for uh, internet, I think I came in 94 or 96, I don't exactly remember in 90s anyway. During that time, the net, the internet was going to the landline telephone exchange. You have to dial up and get connected to the internet exchange. You have to dial up and that too, you have to call an STD that uh, Access server, remote access server was available at Madras at that time. You have to make an STD call. That STD call costs some uh, some amount. And then for the graphical account, it, uh, for a monthly usage, I think it was 10,000. The uh, account cost 10,000 rupees. So such costly was the internet at that time. Later on, we have the seen an explosion of uh, uh, technology. In what way I'm really happy that I could witness all the uh, transformation from a manual exchange, from a electromechanical exchange to the, now we have the internet exchanges. Now we, we, uh, whatever data as well as voice goes through the same path. Earlier, we were having exchanges for voice alone, then for the data alone. And later on, 
now now you can see that for voice and data everything goes on the same path that you can see you are in your uh, home and all you for the broadband either fiber or copper wire your internet as well as voice uh, that both are coming on the same line isn't it earlier during earlier times either you can use either voice or data that scenario you, you might not have witnessed we have to dial and then access the data and that working in installation it was very it was such a good expo exposure because we have to uh, link in each and every cable pull in all the cards then you have to program it so it was a nice experience because from the bits you are bringing up an exchange the installation part so after that uh, installation uh, I, uh, after that uh, joining as jto installation i i was main, uh, i was there for maintenance also maintenance as a jto maintenance that th these are different positions in the uh, our office later on i uh, uh, for some 10 20 years i was in that uh, technology part then uh, uh, after that i joined at, at a training center as a digital engineer then as uh, i was looking at uh, as a training management and the administration of a training center in in telecom later then i joined um, after that i got promoted as a deputy general manager later i i was looking now i am looking after till last month i was looking after the hr and administration now only i have joined as a djmit that is my story but this exposure and the technology change for the past 30 years it was it was worth seeing that change over from the very manual thing to the fully automated present scenario now you know the even the mobile mobile started in 2000 so in mobile itself the technology revolution that you can all see earlier when we used mobile we were not having any internet and uh, later when 2g uh, if you talk about the generation in gsm first it started with 1g but in india we didn't have that 1g in india we started with 2g that is voice only uh, mobile then we have that 2.5g that is where we could use internet also along with the voice in the mobile then came 3g 3g the the data speed has increased earlier in 2.5g the maximum speed was some 9 uh, 14 kbps in 3g it increased to uh, 1 mbps or some little more and later then after 3g we have 4g the maximum speed we are telling 100 mbps but we do, we, we won't be getting that 28 30 mbps only that we will be getting in 4g and finally now we are on the verge of 5g 5g has started in us australia and all the the speed is 100 times the 4g which is 10 gb now you know with 4g what you you can all do if with 4g if you are on the move you can get the data you can read your mail you can attend your class or uh, if you are on the move and in with 5g everything is possible everything is connected a 
in the smart cities you 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 may be knowing uh, our bhopal is we are 100 smart cities are coming up in india first one was bhopal everything is connected so more intelligent more aware more connected cities are coming up so you have immense opportunities job opportunities in uh, it sector and you can count in a big way to the society with the, you, the technology whatever technology with the technology we can you can think of improving the conditions of the uh, disabled people we can we can be more inclusive inclusive society so a lot more are the uh, ashraf can you just uh, show me that uh, you can can you share the screen here you can see 5g will generate 22 million jobs in the world and dollar 12.3 trillion of global economic output the so total digitalization is coming up the transportation you uh, you 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 will be wondering uh, yeah how th this is already there in bhopal you can think of uh, the buses you may be you, now you we may have to wait in the bus stops waiting for the buses that is a time loss no so but if you know the exact time of when the bus will be coming within 5 minutes or you you may, in the metros you can you can see your train will be coming in the next 5 minutes or or in the next 10 minutes so like that you will be getting a flash board in display boards in the bus stands in the bus stops you uh, and so uh, ev everywhere it is totally connected digitalized transportation and driverless cars and ease of parking and everything you can just uh, that you might have seen in so many videos no how uh, the, uh, the car is uh, parked without a driver and how easy it will be enable the better manufacturing in the industry total automation and now also we have connected cars we are bsnl is providing sim cards to uh, tata motors or uh, the many car companies they are bringing up connected cars so connected cars you not only for the dri driverless uh, thing these sim card so it will send out the condition of the car whether any fault is there that if your service is time is there service time has come that will be notified to you in your mobile as well as to the service uh, centers and you know this uh, if your decarbonization or testing of the vehicle everything you will be notified so nobody can do any manipulations so nowadays we are getting uh, that uh, okay certificates everything we are manipulating so such things are not possible your car condition is notified then uh, for smart energy solutions renewable energy uh, can be used smart energy solution if two supplies are there if at all any power out is there you will be supplied with the, the power from other feeder so smart energy solution faster emergency response now you can think of smart electric lights the traffic lights so if tra traffic lights will analyze the traffic in one route and uh, the traffic will be controlled so that there is no need for you have to wait for in a junction or it, during that time you you can just uh, suppose a uh, ambulance is coming so ambulance come you, it has we have to give way for the ambulance so everything 
is done automated emergency response and have a great impact on the internet of things so internet of things is iot's everywhere sensors will be there sensor you can just think of uh, a parking slot you may be uh, traveling to cities so say city may be uh, congested you may not be know, we may not be knowing where the parking spaces are available so you using internet apps you can just pay for the parking slot beforehand and then park your vehicle you don't have to run a, run around the city looking for parking spaces smart street lights which switches on when whenever there is a, whenever a person is coming no normally it at 2 10 o'clock it can be switched in the switched on switch, switch on condition at 6 o'clock in the evening uh, it it will sense the light and switch on the street lights and we don't require street lights during uh, uh, midnight so there it is required only if somebody is coming so if whenever a person comes nearby at that time uh, the street lights get switched on so everything uh, that is the impact of uh, uh, this internet of things and 5g internet uh, uh, 5g the impact of 5g is now also we have iot's but the the communication we are using 4g or 3g or some other wifi's so we don't the response will not be that much faster so what is the difference between 5g and uh, 4g the 5g the we are using high frequency waves the frequency range is 30 to 300 gigahertz so that means what we require a number of small small cells multiple small cell uh, stations and here also we have smart poles smart poles which is housing the uh, antenna 5g antenna 5g bts we call it as bts or 5g radio stations along with that street light sensors wifi access everything we can give that is smart poles in smart cities we use smart poles so the the potential of 5g is 10 gbps you can just imagine how fast it will be so it is going to bring about a new revolution in industry in the manufacturing field so whatever job we see now that won't be there in the future in the next 5 years so if driverless cars are going to come there won't be any drivers and whatever i i can tell about my experience so during my days i i told no i i have joined as as jto installation and jto maintenance during my time some seven or eight jto's were there to ma manage a telephone exchange one telephone exchange so like that in trivandrum city itself we have some seven or eight telephone exchanges so everywhere we require this much people and we were coming in shift because we have to maintain it round the clock we may not be there after 9 in the evening but uh, that, that was the case at during that time but now everything is central centralized this knock the network operating center can be at one place for the whole care, for the Cold Kerala circle, or or nowadays we have one knock at Bangalore only. So Bangalore takes care of the south zone as a whole. So there you can see what are the things available. There you can see uh, we have terminals for man machine communication. You may be uh, uh, the total uh, status of the network elements are displayed there. you can just see the health status if at all any fault is there you will be alerted even if you are at home you will be you will get an alert on an sms as an sms so you can just log in to the uh, system and see or 
sometimes you can do the rectification from even from home if it if it is a gray fold you you may have to come but still most of the things can be uh, rectified from home itself then okay these are the 5g players in the world now at&t was the first internet provider to come out with the 5g but they have they are operating only in us they started in 2018 and now it is they have reached up to 190 places 190 places are connected over 5g what the 5g requires a number of the antennas or the bts is a base station requirement is more now vodafone vodafone uh, it it is open in uk ireland spain germany greece netherlands new zealand qatar romania and italy but it's not likely to come in india because uh, we know now vodafone and idea they have vi is vi, VI is there we don't know the, the fate of vi now they may stay back or they may have to go out now we will be having only jio and uh, airtel most probably sometimes vi will be there bsnl is uh, nowhere coming uh, near them then telstra in australia they have started in may to 2019 and then rain in south africa yes jio jio india's uh, largest network provider now within a short span they took uh, all the they grabbed all the market they they are all set to and airtel is also all set to start trial 5g trials in the country so a lot of opportunities are going to come up in this uh, field in as a telecom service provider or a anything you can you can aim, uh, even start on your own startups which is of great use to the humanity like uh, in smart cities you can just think of waste management or whatever technology you can bring in to ease the life of citizens for a quality life technology aided life you can bring in change your young generation you can bring in change for that what is required is not your intelligence yeah intelligence it it is it is having its own part not your ability you may have immense talents but what counts more it is your attitude your attitude that is going to count more in what way you can bring you can give back to the society you can just think yeah you, you might have heard about this if you assign a number to each and every alphabet a is 1 b is 2 c is 3 like that and you sum up the values of the alphabets in attitude it will be it is 100 so everything hard work is it is coming 98 or 90 in 90s only ability it it will not come as 100 but attitude if you count it is coming to 100% so your attitude is going to count so all the very best for the for all of you shall we wind up <laughs> thank you yeah. thank you yeah. i think you you know started so, all your <laughs> you know, and now it is so wonderful just a very good story yeah and then uh, the transition right so my daughter used to tell uh, uh, she can live with father mother food and all but without internet and whatsapp no 
she cannot ah, leave. she cannot uh, leave yeah. <laughs> so that's the age we are in so yeah. oh, has, but uh, i have crossed my time no oh, <laughs> sorry <laughs> now it is 21 40 yeah uh, we have not seen the computer even in a, you know when i was studying in masters Uh, yeah i have not seen the computer actually but we have one at qsat no we yeah. had we had one that was a big uh, center actually computer center <laughs> uh, yeah so that was so, one. yeah uh, in the computer in library also we had i think yeah one yeah. game but in my office we i had only one uh, computer and we were all working on that particular computer in fact i started um, programming with visual fox pro and all uh, not visual fox pro fox base mm-hmm. fox base scripts uh, uh, in that 486 yes yeah anyway, thank you thank you yeah. for your so time. thank you <laughs> So, yeah Nina, thank you thank you very much for sharing your inspiring story which uh, most of which i know Uh, uh, yeah, you you know very well. Yeah, yeah. You yeah. people know very well. We know the start, but we don't know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. Uh, it is a great lesson for the students here also, I think, because uh, you wanted to be something else, but you showed that through your hard work and attitude that you could uh, reach to uh, the top. Of you have yeah. the right attitude, so that was a great message, I think, uh, from your talk, best students. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that this is what now nowadays people, uh, these students, they can go after their passion, but we don't have much opportunity yeah, during that time. Yes, yes, yes. exactly. Yeah. But uh, they need not get disappointed, even if they are not able to pursue their fashion, uh, passion. but you can love yeah, yeah you have yeah, to yeah. that is my one more, one more point i wanted actually this is not uh, your your mentor ashraf ji uh, today he robbed in uh, today i was not at all free but uh, I, i wanted to tell you one one more thing that uh, even if uh, you you may not be getting uh, the job whichever you like but what you can do is love your job don't do i don't tell you love your organization because nowadays people are jumping from one organization to other but whatever you do you pursue it with passion and uh, uh, throw out yourself into it involve in that then you will be a success so thank you all yeah thank you thank you lina yeah yeah, yeah.